Have a little faith, people will say, but what does it mean? If we look at the world, it tells us to, be to believe we can do it, to have faith in ourselves. This is contrary to what the Bible teaches, and the Bible is the source of our faith. Read Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. Father, I pray that the words you have given me are clear to the readers. I pray that anyone who wants to put their faith in you would understand the way to do that is to trust that your word is true. I pray you would work in hearts that wants to know you and that you would draw others to you yourself. Help us know how to trust you. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. The Bible teaches that God is the creator. He made everything, including us. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. <clears throat> I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depth of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in the book before one of them came to be. God made us in secret. He knows everything about us, just like he knew everything about Adam and Eve. They were the first man and woman God created. Adam was made from the dust of the earth, and Eve was made from the Adam's rib. Genesis 2, verse 7 through 23. Even, go, even though God created man with no sin, man had, a free, man had a free will and he chose to sin. Then God redeemed him. Through Adam all men were sinners, but through Jesus Christ we can become righteous. We just have to believe that Jesus is our sacrifice, shedding his blood on the cross for our sins. First, we need to believe the Bible is true. Then we need to trust in what it says. We put our faith in God by believing what God tells us in his word. When something happens in our lives that we don't understand, we need to remember God's ways are perfect. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who takes refuge in him. 2 Samuel 23 verse 31. He doesn't think like we think. In fact, he tells us in Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, that his ways and even his thoughts are much more, much higher than ours. Putting faith in God would mean we believe that even though things look tangled up, God is able to untangle them. When tragic things happen, putting faith in God means we believe, no matter how bad things look, that God will them together for good. When God says he will work all things for good, there is no exception. Too often we look at what we are experiencing and cannot fathom how it will work out. But that's exactly when we need to place that situation into Father's capable hands. They are the very hands that created the world, and we can rest knowing that he has things under control. There are times when we will be tempted to feel alone. Maybe our loved one has died and we don't know how we will live without them, but God promised he will never leave us. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Deuteron Deuteronomy 31 verse 6. Will we ever feel alone? Yes, there will be times we'll feel as if we're the only person in the world. That's when we need to hold on to what is true, no matter how we feel. Our feelings are fickle. We can fill up one moment and down the next. We need to believe what God says, and he said he would never leave us. When we find ourselves in trouble of any kind, we can take a deep breath and thank God that he is right there with us. Psalms 46 verse 1. In this world full of technology, it's wonderful to know that we don't have to text God and find out he's not available or call him on the phone to find he's stepped away. God is there 24-7 and he encourages us to call on him whenever we need him. <clears throat> putting our faith in God is going to putting our faith in God is going to him when whatever is on our mind. When our grandson Charlie was little and he lost his McQueen car, we prayed about it. Why? 
because it was important to Charlie. It was important to me, too. If we feel this way about our ch children and grandchildren, how much more does God care about us? God is not stunned by our struggles or trials. We get a call from the doctor with, with the result from a test and we begin to panic and we're caught off guard. We start to worry about what the doctor said, wondering how we'll manage with this illness. God is not surprised by any of it. He knows everything. In the book of Job, God questioned Job because he acted as if he was equal to God. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me, if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Dimensions, Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? And who laid its cornerstone while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? Job 38, verse 4 through 7. Of course, the answer to all God's questions to Job were the same. No, Job was not there when God laid the foundation of the world, nor was he there to help God. God didn't need any help. Not only is he all-knowing, he is all-sufficient. I love it when God talks about the birds in the air in Luke 12, verse 7. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered, don't be afraid. You are worth more than any, than many sparrows. God also men mentions our very hairs are numbered, but he doesn't stop there. He also talks about the flowers in the field. Read Luke 12, verse 27 through 28. Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labor or spring. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? Have you seen some of the beautiful flowers God has made? It's all God's doing. One of God's name is Jehovah, which means the Lord will provide. Not, not the Lord might provide or the Lord, Lord could provide. Putting faith in God might look like you're obeying what God asks you to do and even when it feels like you won't have enough money trusting that God will provide for your needs. We needed new windows but we did not have the money. God let us find out about an organization who helps veterans. This organization provided a new garage roof for us. Then a couple of weeks later they contacted us and told us they were coming over. When they got here they had a company with them which provided new windows. God knew what we needed, just like the loving Father He is. When I taught Sunday school to kindergartners, I shared the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. He took lunch of one little boy, five loaves, two fishes, and fed 5,000 men, women, and children. When they were done eating, Jesus instructed His disciples to gather up the remains which filled 12 baskets. When they had all had enough to eat, He said to His disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. John 6, verse 12. God whispered to me, See, I don't waste anything. Are you going through a difficult time right now? Have you experienced things you don't understand? Let me just tell you, God doesn't waste anything. He has a purpose in the things He allows. While it may not make much sense to you right now, one day it will. Maybe you're continually praying but getting no answers. Perhaps the things you're asking for is, a, is good things, something that would benefit you and your family. Still, the answers are not forthcoming. What does it look like to have faith in this situation? Read Psalms 84 verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favors and honors. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk is blameless. blameless. As you keep reading God's word, your faith will grow, and when things in your life happen and you don't understand, you still put your faith in God. When God doesn't answer your prayers, instead of being upset, you will come to realize what you prayed for must not have been good for you. If it were, God would have would not have withhold it. For years, we did not know what happened to my sister. Her husband told us she walked out, but we never believed it. She loved her three little boys. She never would have left them. We prayed and prayed, but she didn't, but didn't receive the answer to our question. Then, through a series of events, God let us know to the victim that that she was a victim of domestic violence. 
Why didn't we know that for years? It was not the right place. And after you walk with God and learn this character, you will come to an understanding that God is always looking out for the, our best interests. Maybe it's easier for you to believe God for other people, but you struggle with it comes to you. You know that Jesus died for your sins and you've trusted in his sacrifice. Although you've tried, you just cannot forgive yourself. Instead of freedom, you carry a heavy load of guilt. What would it look like to have faith in God about this? In Romans 8, 1, God explains there are no condemnations to those who have trusted God. God is not holding you accountable for the sins you are holding on to. In fact, the Bible says that Jesus is our intercessor. When the accuser, Satan, tries making us feel guilty, Jesus tells God, Father, he or she believes in me. The promise God gives us is Hebrew 8.12. God says he will remember our sins no more. Have you seen people who seem to have so much faith? They pray about things and soon they see answers to their prayers. Then there are others who pray and pray for months, maybe years, without receiving answers. What makes them keep trusting? Why doesn't their faith wither? It's because they have taken their faith, no matter how small it is, and placed it in the right source. Having faith in God is believing that God will accomplish what he says he will. God is not human, that he should lie, not a human being, that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Numbers 23, verse 19. Having faith is believing God doesn't lie. Have you ever seen the faith of a child? That's the kind of faith God honors, a faith that believes God can do anything. How do we acquire that faith? We acquire it by deciding to trust God one decision at a time. Each time I make that decision, God gives me rest, just like this song, Rest in You by Nathan Peterson. Uh, so in this lesson, it's to bring all our faith to God, no matter what. Even when we ask for something and it doesn't seem to come true, we need to remember that God's time is different than our time and maybe what we're asking for is not what we need. Um, so all I can say is whenever you're worried about something, always bring it to God. That's been something that's been keeping me going for the longest time. Whenever I'm feeling brow beaten or down in the dirt or whatever, I try my best to go into my prayer closet and just pray and pray and talk to God. Even if it's not nothing specific, it's just talking to God one-on-one -on -one and it makes me feel better. Even when Satan is trying to drag me across the floor and, and tell me that I'm not worthy, I know that because of Jesus, what he did for me on the cross, I am worthy and you guys are worthy too. So just remember, whenever you have something you need to pray for, bring it to God. Lay it at God's feet and let him decide what he's going to do for you. I hope this is going to help for somebody that's out there that needs it. I love you guys so much. Thank you for all the strength and comfort you have given me in these last couple of weeks since my sister passed away. Uh, I can't even begin to thank you enough for that. I love you guys very much and I can't wait to see Jesus coming in the air. And I can't wait to give each and every one of you guys a hug when we're in heaven. I love you. Have a good day and God bless you all.